Okay, this is what I've got for you today, guys. We're going to do a spray gun review of these guns that I've used on the channel. You've seen them in the videos, various different ones. We'll uh, just go ahead and jump right in. And uh, we'll start with the Sharp Graco FX3000. It's the Finex. You know, it's, uh, it's a super high quality gun. This used to be my budget pick uh, for. Uh, any spray gun. I've seen this this gun really stacks up really well Against guns that cost three times as much. It came with a metal cup It's got a 1-3 tip and they offer it in various different tips. You can get a 1-4 if you're into that and uh, All that but this thing's a monster and if you were gonna buy a gun and you, you, can, you can't go wrong with this gun. This gun is excellent. It's it. It's all metal heavy duty it's got the two um, extra holes here um, they keep the pattern looking real good it atomizes the only downside to this gun is uh, it doesn't have the largest fan I've ever seen but it does have a very large fan for a gun that's this small in the hand it's a pretty small gun it's compact um, I can't say enough good things, but like I said, one con would be that the spray fan is not as big as some of the others, but that doesn't mean it doesn't produce quality. The overlap with this is about 10 inches. Uh, from here to here, you get that kind of uh, spray pattern, and that's totally workable if you're going to paint a car. So, great gun. Um, no one's asked me to review it yet, and I figured I'd go ahead and throw it in there because this is one of my favorite guns. Now, the next one I'll talk about is the Astro Euro Pro HE. Now, I said I was gonna do a review on this gun, and I am. Um, this thing is a beast. This is my new favorite gun. It costs like $89 versus this gun, which costs around $130. Um, I will say this gun atomizes slightly better, but it has a small fan. This has a monster fan on it. It's really wide. It can pound down two to one clear because that's what I've been using. I've only been using this gun since I got it. I wanted to review it and see if it really could uh, do a good job. And it does. And for the money, it's like $89. Uh, all metal construction. It's easy to clean. Um, and if you break it, it's $89, so you're not out a ton. It's got a plastic cup though that's a drawback to it um, another drawback is it is easy to get clogged with thicker materials uh, so every time you use this gun you really need to uh, uh, pop it apart and clean it which you should be doing anyway if you have a gun cleaning station it makes it easier but uh, you know I usually keep producer in all my guns uh, all the time anyway when I am in the painting session so that's not usually a big problem but the, the finish you can get out of this is unbelievable. It will lay down, it pounds clear down, and if you keep your eye on it, um, you know, you can you can stack your coats up and get a real nice level finish, and it is a good gun. Uh, it does what it says it's gonna do. It's a very good uh, compromise of a European. You know, it's made in Taiwan, um, as far as Taiwan, uh, Taiwanese goes. It's really good. Astro's been doing it a long time too, since like 1980. So they've been in the game. That's why they have the uh, little bit better guns. Um, now we have this Anesta Wada. This beast. Um, this has a small fan. It's not as it's not nearly as big as the two that I just showed you. Um, but this, if you're going to be painting a Toyota, a Honda, a Nissan. And you need to get uh, very level and thin coats. You know, you don't want to put tons of clear coat on. You kind of want to restrain it. If you had lacquer and you wanted to do furniture, um, then you want to put a very thin material, very thin coat on with very good control. I would say the W400 here, it has all of that. It's going to give you the control. Uh, can't, it can it can put out a good paint job 
but all these guns can paint you know they can all put paint on a panel this one puts it on and it you know it does it in a way you know two to one that i ran through it um it does it in a way that you know it's got a lot of finesse for the money these roughly go for about a hundred bucks so very budget friendly i mean if you bought this gun and you think it's going to be like a sada or a Davilibus and it's going to be able to, you know, get you these mirror finish, like pounded on two to one clears that you see uh, on YouTube a lot from professional painters. This gun is going to struggle in that arena, but a four to one uh, lacquers, if you're going to do a really light coat, you don't want to have to reduce the crap out of your clear, um, you know, run too high of a reducer. Uh, this gun can do the thinner materials better, I believe, and it atomizes beautifully. Uh, the design is there now. I did have a problem with this. Um, somebody said this is a Chinese fake. If it is, it's a good one. Um, you know, it did have the sticker of authenticity right there. I don't know if y'all can see that, but I, I don't know. Um, I sit there and uh, it's shipped from Japan. I paid duty on it from Japan. Uh, I'm sorry, I paid duty on it from Japan. I do have a new camera, so I'm trying to get used to it. And it uh, it seems to be a very good gun. Um, if it's a Chinese copy, it still shoots great. You can get one um, from Amazon or uh, eBay, but be careful on eBay at anything Anesta Wada because there are a lot of knockoffs. But I, you know, I got it from a guy in Japan. Maybe they imported it there and then sold it. But it's uh, it's still a good gun. I mean, for the money, I mean, hell, it's all metal. You can clean it. It'll last you a lifetime, and it does atomize probably. Uh, better than any of these other guns as far as the, the uh, but it's got a smaller fan um, out of all of these it's got the smallest now this one is the flag 5 by Davilibus this gun's been reviewed by tons of people um, I've heard everything from it's the best to it's just average it's no no big deal and you know that's reading in forums and stuff like this but I'll tell you right now my experience with it is it atomizes great it has a great uh, spray pattern on it um, very good control I would say that this is the standard for spray guns if you keep it clean and you keep the material in it uh, the right consistency this gun will not struggle shooting two to one four to one any of that it's got very good adjustment on it very good atomization um, it mixes well and uh, it doesn't take a ton of air that's uh, all these guns here are very good on air including this one but out of these three this is actually probably the one that takes the most air uh, so you need a good air compressor but uh, as far as for quality I got this in a two kit um, one was a primer gun and one was the actual um, paint gun and uh, this is it's just a, a crazy good gun it's all metal construction so if you buy this gun it'll last you a lifetime um, it's just heavy I mean not too heavy it's got a good balance to it you feel like you got a solid product I did get this out of Europe I spent three thirty uh, three thirty seven plus sixty nine dollars in shipping um, on this gun uh, it's got a great cup on it but it's not a metal cup it's a plastic cup but Divilibus is known for their good cups and all great gun I got the primer gun over there now the limitation with the primer gun is uh, it's got a 1.8 tip in it uh, so you're gonna have to thin your materials on some of these ultra high uh, solid primers if you're running that kind of scenario but in reality if you're running just a standard high build uh, and you, you know you're not gonna run into that uh, that limitation this right here shoots great it's a 1.4 tip I do believe but it, uh, it that doesn't affect anything um, on clear it looks pretty good it's a very versatile gun very professional if you're getting into the uh, professional body shop situation you can beat this gun up every day and it's going to continue performing very well whereas you have some of these other guns like the Astro here or um, even I mean the Fine X it's not gonna hold up like this this will be there years and years and years from now and uh, the last gun we're going to review is this one I've gotten asking I've had comments on all these guns people 
wanted to know about it, so I'm going to do the review. Is this Cobalt? Uh, it's a S G Y A I R A A N B model number, and uh, it's a uh, it's my least favorite gun. <laughs> now there's somebody on YouTube that uh, uses this gun exclusively, uh, and they love it, and I I don't want to say anything good about it. Uh, this is a terrible gun. Uh, it takes it, it it eats air, you know, and uh, it's it's got a small pattern. The pattern's not very good on it. It's it, it can you paint a panel with this? Yes, you can paint a panel with it. But then again, you can paint it with all these too. But none of these are going to give you the headaches that this will. This is a one four tip. I'll say the good things about it is it. Uh, it's fair quality, I guess. It looks neat in the photos, but it feels cheap in the hand and it's heavy. So I guess if you needed to throw it at somebody to, you know, uh, to, to win a fight, I think you might take this one. But as far as spray quality, it doesn't perform uh, compared to a real professional gun that was designed, you know, for painting automotive. This thing is designed for, I believe, furniture painting. But then again, I have a, a W101 that I think is better in every single way than this. And this thing was expensive considering it. It was like, uh, I think it was like 80 bucks for this. Now, it's got a 1.4 tip in it. It only has two air holes here. It doesn't put a good fan down in it. If you do want to get the fan to concentrate and give you a good pattern, you have to crank up the air pressure. And it's got a 35 PSI max. So you're gonna to have to go above that to get a good narrow pattern that looks good. And you know, there is one quality. I do like the pattern, the fluid and the airflow. It's labeled here. So if you were a beginner and you bought this gun, you could uh, you can mess with this. But as most of us already know, and if you're on YouTube, you, you know, you crank out the fluid all the way, you run the airflow all the way out, you know, and that's usually right here. And then your pattern is really the only thing you're gonna to tweak too much on on a daily basis and then your regulator is where you're gonna is gonna be down here and that's where you're gonna adjust your air pressure so having that labeled I don't mean to bash it um, I can paint with it I did paint some stuff with it but it uh, it's there's too much to overcome with this gun and the price is too high do not get this gun if you're at Lowe's and you're like I need a paint gun go on Amazon have them ship it to you two days wait um, or go to a professional auto body shop and buy you a really, really good gun. Um, but as far as all the guns go, uh, the Cobalt, I bought just a review I wanted to see. Um, all these other guns I use, um, this W400 is one I haven't used a lot of, but I'm gonna use it for uh, furniture and stuff like that. I'm gonna use some thinner materials to it, um, some lacquers and maybe stuff like that uh, on guitars. But it's, uh, these two guns right here, you can't go wrong with. The Finax and the Astro, I can't say enough. If I had to pick one gun off the table right now and say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that gun for the next few months, I would say the Astro is the one because the cost to performance ratio on this gun is so skewed. It's uh, I can't say enough good about it. I mean, it puts out a monster fan and the primer gun. Y'all see me shoot with the primer gun. I was so impressed with the primer gun. I had to know if it could, if they, if the clear coat equivalent would would put down a nice two to one. And I've been shooting. I've shot all through every one of these guns. I've shot this Rio Flex Ultra High Solids. That's sixty five percent right there, guys. Solids. It's super thick. I've shot all of this through all of these guns with a ten percent reduction mixed to the sixty minute cure time. Uh, now in the next segment, I'm going to show you all some panels. Like I said, if I was going to pick one, I'd pick the Astro. But uh, in the next segment, I'm going to show you all some test panels. Y'all asked for that too. Um, I think that we've kind of reviewed some of the stuff that I've been holding off on. And so, uh, let me uh, get that shot set up. And uh... okay, guys, now we got some panels here. Yeah. Now I've gotten a lot of a request to spray out some panels and uh, with clear and get into the for the rust oleum stuff. That's what we're going to be talking about. We're talking about the old rust oleum stuff again. And I've gotten a lot of questions and comments. 
about the Rust-Oleum, uh, mixing them and, and what we've talked about in some of the previous videos and I'll pull out the other stuff but I want to show you, I sprayed these uh, sign panels, I didn't do any prep to them, they're just straight out of the, uh, the gun, I wanted to see what the effects were going to look like so the finish wasn't uh, quite as important to me but this one is black, this is a black base and we have clear coat, um, let me see, we have a clear coat in there and that's is the real flex clear coat with the metal flake in it and this is that hollow that green hologram over a black base I mean I think it looks pretty good you know um, and that's the effect you would get you kinda get a transitioning color it goes from green to blue to yellow or goldish back over here and that's a good one I like that one um, these are just for ideas and effects now on this one I shot it with uh, it's kind of a, a different one too. This one was shot with, uh, uh, just sprayed, the base was sprayed and it's just Rust-Oleum hammered. And I went ahead and I took some of the, the mica powders and I, uh, I took a toothbrush and I just, I flicked it in there, got it in there and I flicked this in there and I kind of da you know, uh, dangled it over the top and just kind of dropped in some of the powder because I wanted to get this kind of powdered effect. I don't know if y'all can see it because it's kind of a detail, but I did it. I wanted to see it and I needed to use these colors to get a really good contrast. I mean, I know they don't go together. A light blue and copper really don't uh, go together, but I needed to see the powder. I wanted to see how it laid out. So I basically painted that. I laid a, a clear coat down here and then I did that and then I laid another clear, I let it settle and then I laid more clear over the top of it. Uh, I didn't try to get any of these super glass smooth because the metal flake, you know, I'd have to do numerous coats and you can't sand, sand this stuff uh, until you have a lot of clear on it then you gotta sand it and buff it. That's usually the process when you're dealing with metal flake and all these have metal in them. This has the green metal flake in it. And so uh, we'll move on to the next one and this is one of uh, my favorites, and I'll just, we'll do this one next. Um, this one was that mauve uh, color, the light pinkish rose color. And I went ahead and sprayed it with, uh, it's got a holographic, and it's got a mix of the silver and the other ones in it. A metal flake in there. And I sprayed this color, I think it, it really looks pretty cool. Uh, some of the stuff you can do with these color contrasts. And this is all Rust-Oleum. Uh, I mixed this, this is a custom custom color and I, I went ahead and painted a black base and then I ran uh, this mauve color over it. I mean it looks pretty neat I think. And uh, so we got our next one. Uh, and I really like this one. This is that effect with a pink and gold on it. I went ahead and uh, painted this the mauve because I had it and of course I put the metal flake in there to show you the effects you can get and then I actually laid I don't know if y'all can see it but I took the gold and I sprinkled it on here and I did that because I thought it would be cool if you were to do this with like a, a, a silver uh, or a metal color like a unfinished metal color and then you were to lay this on there it kind of give you that patina that rusted look you know uh, that it had aged on it or it had bleached out from the sun in certain areas but it didn't and I thought it was a cool effect it's a very artsy effect um, a lot of these are I was just experimenting and I want to say something to that about this I get a lot of technical questions and I get a lot of people telling me uh, their opinion on on things this is an experimental thing uh, we're using a paint that wasn't designed to do any of the stuff. It's designed to be put on thick and to protect from rust. Uh, you know, it's, it's an equipment paint and we're doing uh, strange things to it. And I want to say something to that is uh, all this stuff is to your imagination, guys. We, we took the tinning base and uh, we mixed other stuff and I'm not doing that anymore because I, I recommend you go with the clear coat. You take a nice uh, two to one clear coat, like the Rio Flex here, 
I'm not promoting this. This is the closest can. Um, you can use the sealed coat if you want to spend the money. Um, but find a nice two to one that has a good uh, anti-sag properties to it. And then that way you can add more uh, material to it uh, and get a, an effect. We did the helmet that way. Uh, that's the best way to do it. Put the, um, the per if you're going to do pearlized effects or, or pigments, I, I said numerous times in the first video, you know, you put a base color down that's close to what you want and then you add the effect color over that. And you'll have the best results with that with this Rust-Oleum paint. Um, that being said, we tried it with the tinning base. I'm having a hard time finding the tinning base. Uh, I did find this stuff, um, the valve spar and our rust stuff. This right here, I found this. And I, I did use this. I don't know if y'all can see it, it's in focus here. Uh, this valve spar stuff. And the only downside of this was that it had a little bit of white in it. So it would be on the light side if you were gonna mix a base color. To give you the colorant, you're using the actual mica powder, powder for the colorant, you know, like a solid red or anything like that. But if you do want the pearlized effects, you need to put it in a clear coat. Um, now, if you're adding metal flake and stuff like that, the pigment, and I explained this in the first video, if you were to mix it straight in to the paint, there's so much pigment they put in this paint, it's not like automotive paint. Automotive paint is, you know, if you let it settle, and some of them, it's almost clear because it's a tinning base, you know, or it's a, it's a clear base. And uh, you have to mix it up real well and that's why mixing is so important while you're painting because if you don't, it'll all settle on the bottom of the gun and you'll get streaking all over the car. I know all about that stuff and with this paint, it's so thick that if you were to add mica powder directly to the paint that you mixed, you're not gonna see hardly any effect. Now I did do it and I added like 10 or 15 grams to you know, two or three ounces of paint. And yeah, you could kind of see it. I showed it in the first videos that I was talking about this on. And yeah, you could kind of see it. It gave you a little bit of an effect. But that's the whole point of this is, uh, it's an experimenting thing. If y'all find a different way or a better way for, that y'all are doing it in your garage, by all means do it. I'm just saying that I, I want to uh, inspire people to uh, try to, you know, do different things. I don't paint cars with this stuff, guys. This is for tractors, uh, trailers, industrial equipment. That's what I use it for at my job and at home. Uh, but I thought it'd be nice if you know, you have an old car, you don't want to spend, uh, you know, eight, nine hundred dollars on paint on, uh, you might be able to get away with doing it this way and then put a decent clear over it. And it may last you a few more years. Uh, you know, you got a old car for your kid, you know, uh, you know, it's their first car, you put a little paint job on it, and they don't want to be driving around with safety blue, safety yellow, or safety red. You know, those colors are kind of basic and not very forgiving on the eye. But that being said, I'm moving on. Uh, I did this one, and then these two are kind of unique. Um, I kind of did a fade on this. Now, guys, realize these are just test panels. This had a silver base. And I went ahead and laid gold and uh, orange mica powder over it with the tinning base. And it kind of gave me that kind of little effect there. And you know, of course I did a gradient uh, kind of deal. And I really liked that one. And this was uh, a satin clear that I put over these. So it doesn't have any shine to it. And I thought it was pretty cool that you could get that kind of effect. I thought, hey, that'd be great for like a frame, that gold on a frame or something like that and you still got the protection from a clear coat with a nice satin and I thought it would be neat and then I did the same thing with this now I do think this would look cool in a frame um, this is the hammer tone paint painted over black and then it's just got a basic satin clear over it and I don't have any more I'll show it to you but uh, yeah I had a can of this satin clear and I just put it over there and I thought wow that would look killer. I don't think you can pick up the detail if I get closer. But uh, yeah, this would be a killer on a frame or something like that for your truck or car if you're redoing, redoing a vintage thing. And of course they have the different colors on the hammer. I mean, they've been covered. A lot of guys know about this stuff. I do like the way it crackles. There are actual ways to do it. There's another guy on YouTube um, that does this and he actually uses a spray gun and sprays in and use a chemical that creates this uh, dimpling effect. But hell, um, for the 
little hammer tone finish in small projects like a mailbox or something like that that you wanted to have a cool little finish and then you put a matte clear over it I think that's pretty cool and for a frame or something to make it different if you were doing a restoration old car you want to spend a ton of money painting the frame with high-end epoxies and all that nonsense but anyway um, we had those are the test panels uh, that we did and I shot for you guys now I'm gonna pick you up and show you two more and uh, I'll show you the fender here that I did. So we'll walk around on that. So bear with me, guys. Uh, I did get a new camera. It's the uh, Panasonic Lumix. Come on now. And uh, it's a Panasonic Lumix G7. Now here's that green color I was going to paint on the truck. I think it's pretty good. There's the helmet we did in the other videos. And there's another orange panel back here that I did that it's just orange. There's nothing special about it. But I did these two purple panels right here. Um, and I, I really like the way these came out. Um, they've got a nice color to them. And uh, As you can see, uh, I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up, but I think it's trying. <laughs> now on this one, I did a different effect on it. As you can see, it has rainbow uh, flake in it. And what I did with this one was I took a bag, I painted the black on the back. And before I put any purple on it, I went ahead and laid the purple down, which was a lighter purple than this one. But I laid the purple down, right? And then I took a bag and I just dotted it. I wanted to see if I could show y'all some of that kind of stuff that we do, uh, little custom tricks. And I actually ended up getting some gold flake and flicking it in there too. Just wanted to see how that turned out. But yeah, that one is a custom little thing you can do um, to get an effect, like a textured effect on something. But that's all up to you. Like I said, I was experimenting with this. I thought that was the entire purpose of this. Uh, doing these videos was experimenting and trying to come up with new ideas and stuff. So I'm going to continue doing that for you guys. I do appreciate all the positive comments that I've gotten. All the questions. Keep them coming, guys. I mean, I'm not afraid to try to answer questions. But by no means am I an expert on any of this stuff. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and put you back on the stand. And I'm going to talk about uh, some of the automotive projects and what happened. Now, y'all might be asking yourself, hey, Wayne, you said you were going to uh, redo some heads. And I did. I got studs in them, but I have to have them checked out to make sure the heads are, um, uh, are good, uh, not cracked. And they're Vortec heads uh, uh, out of a 96 Chevrolet truck. Now here's the deal. I know I've told y'all, uh, I bought some property uh, and these videos are going to be changing in their content. I'm not just going to be doing the painting um, all the time. I will try to continue to update you on new ideas with the Rust-Oleum stuff and we'll try some more stuff with the, the custom powders and pigments and stuff and we'll see what we can do. But, as of now, I need a truck because I need something that can pull my tractors back and forth uh, out to the property. And it's about 30 minutes from where I live now. And it's 11 and a half acres and uh, we bought it. And I'm going to be building a pole barn on that. And I'm going to start doing some time lapses with this camera. The reason I bought a nicer camera that does time lapses and all that stuff. Um, with that being said, that'll be different content. Uh, than you're used to. It's not just going to be painting or me, me reviewing uh, paint guns. We're going to show time lapses of the build and uh, when I run into problems I'll probably talk to you guys about it and see if I can get information from you or you know uh, you know do you can teach me something and we'll go back and uh, you might learn something too. Uh, but we're going to be putting a pole barn up out there here in the near future, very near future. And that being said, I had that 350 block. We tore it all apart, and the 350 block is probably scrap. Uh, I don't think it's going to clean up. It may clean up at 60, but I don't have any 60 over pistons. So, uh, 
as of now we're going to take the engine that's in that truck out there it's a 1982 GMC uh, it's got a 350 small block in it you know your standard fare and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the engine out of there we'll take it all apart we'll get it cleaned and I'll go ahead and reassemble it we're going to be using um, new parts uh, for that and I got a rod here but brings me to this point I sit there and got these uh, these pistons I've seen a video and it's got this as the tag you know it's dirty piston you know and uh, I went ahead and cleaned it up and I spent $58 on these pistons and they're they're the old school TWR forge pistons and what I want to do with them is I'm gonna hang them on these rods here on these rods that I got these are 4140 rods that I got off of Speedmaster's website. Uh, these rods right here are pretty good. I'm going to hang them on here. You know, we'll, we'll get them hung and do all that. and We'll have a nice little combo there. But that brings me to my point. My point is, I got to build a stout truck motor that produces a lot of torque. Um, I want something that can pull my tractor and a trailer. And it's going to be a nice little farm truck. So... I don't know if this comp cam camshaft here. Sorry. I had this comp cams camshaft that I bought. I think this might be a little too too radical for a, a torquey truck. I mean it doesn't have uh, crazy specs. But it's a pretty large camshaft and it is on a 107 lobe separation. So I think I'm going to have to get another cam, a different cam. But this is a flat tappet cam uh, that I bought. And if we're going to build a torque motor, I don't have a 383. I was going to put this comp cam and we're going to do uh, just a little truck to put around town with. But I need it to haul stuff. So we're going to put these four slugs in there, those uh, H, these, uh, 41 or 40 the, the HD rods in it uh, and then I have a Castile a, a scat, a 9000 Castile 350 crank and I'm going to go through that reassemble the short block with a set of hasting rings and we're going to use the Clavat um, rods and bearings that I had for the other engine but I just wanted to show you I went ahead and cleaned them up and they, they actually look pretty good I don't think they were run very long I mean I don't know if y'all can see but the skirts here they don't look like they've been scuffed at all and I looked at every one of them I think somebody assembled the engine they, they you know maybe it ran it a couple times and ended up having a failure or whatnot and tore it back apart but these these forged pistons don't have any damage on them no scuffing no beating so and I know they didn't drop a valve because there's no divoting or anything like that on any of them and all of them look about the same it may have just been assembled fired up once and left in a car and then somebody passed away or moved on or sold it and they tore it apart said I don't want these really old uh, pistons in there I'll get a set of modern pistons because these pistons are really old uh, their design is they which should give us a nine to one compression ratio and that's what I'm looking for since it's going to be a truck motor and plus they'll take a hell of a pounding because they're forged slugs but anyway guys uh, that's all I got for the video it's already super long I appreciate you guys uh, subscribing. Keep keep them coming. Um, you know, I enjoy the comments. Whatever you have to say, go ahead and say it. Um, I'll try to answer any questions that I do know the answers to. Uh, uh, you know about the stuff I know from experience. Uh, but yeah, guys, like always, um, like subscribe, hit the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I have new content. And uh, God bless.